Well, ladies and gents, welcome back, guys. Hopefully, everybody out there is keeping well. It's been a while since we had one of those raw kitchen table talks. Matter of fact, it's been a while since we made a Q&A session. And today, I have a good uh, Q&A session for you guys because I asked you to ask me some good questions, and surely you did. So a lot of you will learn a lot of uh, things from this video, I guess. So let's get right into it. And as always, some of these questions are going to be related to trading. So the first question goes like this. Tell us how did you learn and educate yourself about trading? strategies that led to success. Now my answer to that guys is anything you pick up today you're gonna learn from mistakes and for me I learned from trials and errors uh, as I said before and any strategy you try to learn is gonna be uh, asking you for a tuition fee and that is some losses to begin with, some mistakes and that's why I always encourage you if you're starting with a new strategy or approach, start small, learn the ins and outs and if you fail then that's a good thing, take it as a, a learning experience because in trading guys you might fail today but then you will give it up just like I did at the start, I failed, wiped half of my account, I gave it up. Then a few months, weeks later, I remember I was showering, taking a shower, and then I was just thinking and lost in my own thoughts. And I remembered exactly what I had done wrong. So then I went back and tried to fix that error, and I fixed it, then I came across another error. And these errors will be costly, guys. So when it comes to learning from mistakes, that's really uh, how you learn, is, is through learning from mistakes, and that will lead you to success eventually. But make sure these mistakes are not huge enough to really destroy you and, and make you poor at the end of the day, uh, which is why small accounts are perfect to start with, and then when you're ready, you can uh, go full time and go full, full scale on it. The first question is answered. In a bull market, is it the same principle to trade the rejection of the support and resistance? In a bull market, it's just like a bear market. In bear markets, we trade resistance. We, re we short the resistance, just like I've taught you here in, in many tutorials, and I'll leave some in the description for you guys. In a bull market, we're buying the support because there's a lot of buying pressure. So yes, it's the same. I struggle with where and when to enter a trade. Would your course help me? Yeah, the course will help you. The chat room will help you. The telegram will help you. The free chat room will help you as well. because. You know, everybody's sharing their entries and it's usually the same because we're trading one thing and one thing only, the support, the resistance levels. So it's all going to be the same numbers and if they're off, they're off by a few points. So uh, support or resistance is really where your entry and exits should be. But you have to be quick to enter. Do not hesitate. And of course, that hesitation it's, it's because of lack of confidence and the way you gain confidence is because when you're trading, you're trading because you have a hypothesis, a theory. When you enter a trade, you're entering because you believe in something and that's your belief in support or resistance, your belief in the momentum and price action, your belief that this is going to do this because of certain things and that will come with time and experience. Next question, how much money did you lose before you became a profitable trader? Well, when I went in, I thought I was the, you know, I thought I was the shit, really. And then I ended up, because you make a little bit of money and you start saying, oh, I, this is me, this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to make this. Then you get humbled, you lose half your account and you're wondering what the hell just happened. That's exactly what happened to me. Uh, and I lost about 10,000. And again, I curled up in a shell and I had to refine the strategy. But I didn't care because I had money saved and I knew I couldn't do anything with it. I can't get a, get a house, I can't get a mortgage, I can buy a car with it, but that's a waste of time. So, I had to just sit back and come up with something better. And really, that's, uh, that's your journey and will be your journey in everything you do, even your business, if you don't do trading. You will have to learn from mistakes. What would you be working as if you weren't in the trading game? Well, I've got an honors degree in business computing, all right? I could be working as a software engineer in Google, Facebook, Twitter, whatever company, a social media company, or any company out there. I used to develop software. Uh, so, I wouldn't even be working in the first place. I'd probably be working some shitty job just so I don't have that pressure so I can have time to work on my businesses. And that's what I would be doing. Because back in the day, I knew I don't want to continue 
that journey of creating a career for myself. What the f is a career? I mean, for me, a career means uh, you climb up the ladder and here is the ceiling, you hit the ceiling, then you're finished. And you get lazy, fat, and uh, depressed and just, you know, you get the point. How to deal with lack of discipline? Lack of discipline in trading is as a result of, uh, I guess, when you're taking a loss, you go revenge trade. It's psycho psychological. When you make profit, you're greedy, you wanna make more. But you always have to wait. So waiting is a requirement in trading. You have to wait for support to hit, for resistance to hit, for, for, for a couple of things to happen. Your, pro your stop loss has to be there and let your stop loss get triggered if it wants to get triggered. But once it gets triggered, I know you want to recoup, just wait. Wait for a certain thing to happen, for resistance to hit again, shorter resistance. For support to hit again, buy a support. Do not trade in the middle when your stop loss gets hit. And again, all of this will come with experience, with lessons. When Lambo, great question. Look, I could have bought a Lambo a long time ago. I could buy any car I want today. But I don't really have the mindset for it. I don't want to impress anybody. I don't have to impress anybody. All I have to impress is my bank account. My bank account is very impressed. Uh, my portfolios are very impressed. My real estate portfolios are very impressed. I don't need to impress anybody. Uh, if you want to impress someone, I mean, you're not successful. Uh, and and you're, you're itching for, for some attention. Sometimes attention is not good attention. Too much attention. Uh, what you want to do is be low-key. I've met, you know, millionaires who have more than me, who don't even have a Rolex. I mean, I got a Rolex because I wanted a Rolex. I never had a watch. So, uh, yeah. I've met people that drive simple cars under 100,000. Because they come with the liability, they come up with calculations in regards to liabilities, and we know a Lambo costs a lot of money to repair and to fix. Uh, so you don't want to be spending money out of your ass. That's what I'm trying to say. Regardless of how much you make, you'd rather spend that money on a holiday. Were you mentally prepared to quit your job and do what you do today? Was it your ambition? Yeah, I was mentally prepared. I was ready to quit. Matter of fact, I had to quit while I was working. So what I mean by that is I was still going to work. Nobody knew I quit, but in my mind, in my heart, I had quit. I was just going to get paid because I knew once I finish, I go back to work on my business. As a matter of fact, even when I'm working, I'm still working on my business. I'm thinking, I'm looking just like a lot of you do today. So, uh, yeah, you have to be prepared mentally. Um, and you got to pull the truck. Now, yeah, now when I pulled the plug and called them and I said I had quit, I was nervous. That was the best decision I had made. But of course, I, I had something working and I had made some money from trading. And I had YouTube as well. And I had uh, uh, trading, you know, made a lot of money in trading before I had to quit. So I, I knew there was something working. How do you overcome the fear of losing? Uncertainty always sits in the back of my head. For me, I never expect anything from a trade. Once I enter a trade, I say to myself, this is a losing trade. Right, subconsciously, I don't expect to win. I enter at a good setup. I have my stop loss, I'm willing to lose that much. If it gets hit, so be it. Then I go again, recoup it with a good, better trade. Uh, so, uncertainty, when lo I mean, you're gonna lose. There's no question about that, you will lose. Just make sure your losses are calculated and small because then you make good trades and recoup the losses. Did you have a comfortable childhood, Zed? Did you come from a poor or rich family or middle class? I didn't come from a middle class family and I didn't come from a poor family. It was in between. Which a lot of people, by the way, will be in, right? It's not middle class. What is middle class, first of all? Middle class is working a nine to five job. That's what they say. But a nine to five job doesn't mean middle class. You're broke, majority of people nowadays. They, can't, they can only put money on the table, uh, you know, food on the table and, and uh, pay the bills with a 9 to 5. So uh, I guess that's the reason why I'm motivated. That's the reason why I will never stop working. I will keep, keep going after it because I know what it's like. What's your t top tips for growing a small account, 500 to 1,000? Just like I showed you in many videos, go watch my tutorials. Uh, take the small profits, don't aim for home runs. Um, 
your stop loss, make sure it's tight. Wait for resistance support level. The closer it is, the better, and don't hesitate to enter. Uh, learn the price action. And just keep your contract, your size, small. And just grow it slowly. Before you know it, you had doubled and tripled your account. When are you planning to start trading stocks again? When the market picks up again. For investors, we've already started. So for you, if you want to start uh, day trading stocks, then wait for a couple of months. Things will get nice very soon. I can see your YouTube is down. Also seems you're not concentrated on YouTube. Well, I'm not concentrated on YouTube because YouTube isn't really something that pays the bills. Uh, I'm focused on trading. I'm focused on the people on the inside, on my trades, on sharing my te telegram signals for free, on the Discord, uh, and just helping people. YouTube is just a tool for me to, you know, reach out to other people that are looking for me but don't know I exist. So that's what YouTube is, is, is there for. I'm not a YouTuber, uh, but I'm trying my best, guys. I really am trying my best to deliver a video every week, every two weeks to you guys. Uh, and that's it. That's really all I want to answer today. I'll see you guys soon. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Look at the description for some resources and peace and love as always. Peace. Oh, by the way, if you want me to return to making trading lessons for you guys and trading tutorials, make sure to drop a like and a comment below. Peace. <laughs>